Hello all, let's start now with the current affairs roundup for Jan to March 2023, which is your GS1 topic. Uh, this is from Yatarth IAS, uh, a new initiative of current affairs. So let's continue with the first, from the first video where we stop. The Keela Landur coffee. This is a traditional coffee farmers of Anchunad at Marayur in Iduki. It is reaping the benefits of the organic farming. So now what you have to concentrate from your examination point of view is that what is this coffee? Why it is famous? This Keela Landur coffee is an Arabica variety of coffee. And this is in a grown in a village in Iduki district called Keelanandur in Kerala. The specialization um, should be known here. These coffee beans are mainly cultivated at Kantalur, Keelanandur, Kulachivayal, Vetukad of Iduki district and they are marketed as Keelanandur coffee. So let's see why it is famous, famous actually mainly for its taste and aroma and also they are using traditional organic farming for growing this coffee which makes it very special. Organic coffee farming is followed by the tribes people who live in this place called Keelanandur and other farmers in this Anchunad valley which is in Kerala. Please remember this place Anchunad valley in Kerala and please remember this coffee is famous for taste and aroma and it belongs to Arabica variety. And it is grown by organic farming. In 2014, Chilla, which is an exclusive tribal market under the Marayur Forest Division, was opened to sell and produce cultivated by the tribes people. So please remember from this topic, uh, this is an Arabica variety of coffee and it is famous for its taste and aroma and it is grown traditionally with organic farming and it is grown in Anchunad Valley of Kerala. The next topic we will see today is the leaving root bridges. If you can see here, you can see a double decker leaving root bridge here. Uh, so why it was in news because a farmer takes forward the traditional practice of building root bridges and connects two areas across Umkhar river in Chirapunji. This was in news in your Hindu paper and which makes this living root bridges a very important topic from your UPSC examination point. So a farmer from war tribe, this war tribe is a sub tribe of the Kasi tribes of Meghalaya. They created a root bridge over Umkar river in siege village near Chirapunji also known as Sohra. This bridge is located in the East Kasi Hills district of Ka Meghalaya. The roots of rubber fig which is having a scientific name Ficus elastica was used to build the bridge. They used traditional techniques to mould and model the roots into a bridge with the help of a bamboo. Please remember these this was a prelims question also. This living root bridges are found in northeast state of Meghalaya. And you should remember this uh, bridge is moreover seen in East Kasi Hills of Meghalaya. And uh, they use the roots of this rubber fig. So this state of Meghalaya is known for its living root bridges. It is locally known as Jinking Jri. And they are on the tentative list of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. Please remember it is not added as of now but it is in the tentative list of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So in Meghalaya you have two dominant tribes that is Khasi and Jaintia tribes. The tribe which was mentioned in the Hindu was War tribe. It is a sub-tribe of Khasi tribes. So many bridges across the state of Meghalaya are over a century old and at present there are about 100 known living root bridges which is spread across 72 villages in the state. It is like a, a traditional way everywhere seen in the state and the tribes uh, involve in conserving and building more and more living root bridges here. These living root bridges naturally grow stronger with time 
and thus does not need regular maintenance and repair work. Please see this because it's a uh, if you get a multi statement question, you have to remo remember this. I told you here they are using the roots of rubber fig, so this will become naturally stronger and stronger with time, and they don't need any regular maintenance or repair work. That's how. it is living over a century year old the famous is umshiang double decker root bridge which is in nongkrai to village which is in chirapunji with and is around 200 years old this is the double decker or uh, the umshiang double decker root bridge it is in nongkrai at village near chirapunji next topic is margam kali it was a news because there was a solid performance of this uh, art or dance that is margam kali by the school girls in the kerala school kalotsavam in 2023 it was the headlines of hindu so from the art and culture point of view this becomes a important topic for your examination so what is this margam kali it is a popular christian art form in kerala it is believed to have evolved from kalari payattu please remember this point very important point it is a popular christian art form in kerala it is be believed to have evolved from kalari payattu it involves 12 people and they dance around a traditional lamp which is called vilakku in a circular manner The twelve members in the group are considered as the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. The light lamp represents Jesus Christ. It demands a sense of rhythm and agility from the performers. So please remember, this is from the state of Kerala, and it is inspired or evolved from the Scalari Payattu, which is very very famous defence form of India. and it involves 12 people and they dance around a traditional lamp called vilakku vilakku uh, here represents jesus christ okay the margam kali pattu is written about 4000 lines in different meters the theme of the song is the miracles performed by saint thomas at malankara please remember saint thomas was the one who brought christianity to india The songs are believed to have been written in the 17th century by Kalliseri Itti Thoman Katnar. See, the Saint Thomas was the one who introduced Christianity to India through Malankara Church of Kerala, and of course, it will be the recent art itself that is, it evolved in 17th century in, uh, uh, from the Kalari Payattu. The leader of the dance group is called Asan. he sings or she sings the song and other members in the group sing the chorus musical instruments are not used in this dance it is performed mostly at the christian wedding ceremonies and often at the church festivals so it is a christian festival dance this dance is seen commonly in the districts of kottayam and thrissur the costume of the performance is a white dhoti and they wear a peacock feather on their turban the women wear the traditional dress of the christian which is the chattayum mundum so please understand this is a kerala a traditional uh, folk dance form and uh, it mainly is done by the christian uh, christian community uh, during the christian wedding ceremonies or some church festivals so it was a recent art which was uh, uh, which will praise the miracles performed by saint thomas who introduced christianity to india Uh, through kerala at the malankara you have this community this malankara cult of uh, christianity and uh, there will be a, a written uh, that song will be written in about 4000 lines in different meters next art form we are going to see is oppana so in the same kerala kalol salavam we saw this um, oppana dance form which was uh, pulling uh, the crowd a lot so we should know about this it was also mentioned in the hindu paper so whatever comes in hindu paper becomes very very important for you so this is a traditional song and dance performance popular among the mapilla community of the malabar so if you have read history you know the importance of this mapilla revolt 
so this community of mapilla who are the muslims of uh, malabar M malabar muslims they perform this song and dance called as oppana it is commonly performed at various festive occasions like weddings ceremonies held to herald puberty and so on it is also performed on the occasion of makara kalyanam vayasarik yakal and nal pattu kali the word opana is believed to have originated from the arabic word that is afna so although there are separate types of opana for both men and women the female version of opana is very very popular and there are two styles of singing in the opana one is opana chayil and the other one is opana murukkam then the opana chayil the singers do not clap their hands to the beat of the song whereas in the parts of the song which incorporates the murukkam murukkam means clapping with singing okay clapping with singing but opana chayil is not clapping usually uh, an opana performance starts and ends with a chayil the bride who is dressed in a traditional colorful attire would be seated in the middle see here a bride who is uh, dressed very well is seated in the middle and around her dancers sing and dance teasing her about the impending nuptial bliss see here you are she is surrounded by many dancers who are going to sing and they are going to tease her about this uh, marital experiences harmonium tamburin ila talam or cymbals and tabla are the instrumental accompaniment so we have seen two dance forms here one is margam kali from uh, which is uh, uh, evolved from kalari paitu which is done by the christian community in kerala the next one is oppana which is uh, in the same state of kerala by the, but done by the mapilla community of malabar who are mainly the muslims next is we have seen cold wave in the north india so delhi and other parts of northwest india have been reeling under the cold waves skill a uh, spell so this comes under the geophysical phenomena of your gs1 part so i'm covering it here so first you should know here what is this cold wave it is a condition of hair temperature where which becomes fatal to the human body when it is exposed so the government of india has recognized cold wave as a natural disaster in 2012 so indian meteorological a uh, department uh, has given certain conditions for cold wave it has defined the base on the temperature thresholds over a region in terms of actual temperature or its departure from normal the normal temperature is calculated for every 5 days by taking the average temperature for these days over the past 30 years so this is under the geophysical phenomena so uh, please understand what is this cold wave condition and uh, it might be in a single statement question uh, for your prelims the next important uh, news is in your uh, gs1 is this mantle plumes the, uh, it was in news because a new study shows the evidence of an active mantle plume which is beneath the surface of the planet mars so this is the mantle plume this is the lithosphere and this is the mantle and uh, from here it has uh, there is uh, a mantle plume which has evolved so the lcm plan planitia is a low lying area on mars and it lies to the north of the equator of mars not of earth the volcanic eruptions and mars quakes at lcm planitia may be due to the mantle plumes as mars do does not have plate tecto tectonics so mars does not have plate tectonics like uh, earth to form earthquakes um, which forms earthquakes in mars the mars quakes is happening in this valley or the low area low lying area elysium planitia so that's why there are different mars quakes happening the mantle plumes are large blobs of molten rock that rise towards the surface from the interior of a planet see here from from here lower mantle it is arising to the mantle and it is trying to come up to the lithosphere so that's uh, this is nothing but large blobs of molten rock it is going to rise from the below and it is coming out forming the volcanic eruptions and mars quakes on the planet mars 
so they pushed through the mantle layers and accumulated the base of the crust so aren't you seeing here at the base of the crust it is going to accumulate and it is pushing it itself through the mantle see here so it is pushing itself through the mantle and it is forming a blob of molten rocks under the lithosphere or the crust so this warm plume material pushes against the surface uplifting and stretching the crust it causes earthquakes uh, in mars it is mars quakes faulting and volcanic eruptions the small rock from the plume then erupts as food flood basalts and creates vast volta volcanic plains so this geological phenomena can also be seen in earth in the hawaiian islands you can see here in the pacific plate which is having different plates there and it is uh, more susceptible to earthquakes tsunamis and etc so there you can see the phenomena of mantle plumes in hawaii the island chain of hawaii formed as the pacific plate slowly drifted over a mantle plume The next topic is Gandhi Smarak Bhavan. Uh, it is in news because the police arrested the in charge of the Gandhi Smarak Bhavan in sector 16 of Delhi for misappropriating the sponsorship funds received by the center on the Gandhi Jayanti last year. So this is not important for you. I have just uh, given you here because it was in news because of this reason. Our uh, main focus is on this Gandhi Smarak Bhavan, which is spread over five thousand square yards in sector sixteen of Chandigarh. So it is one of the nine units of the Gandhi Smarak Nadi, uh, Punjab, Haryana, and Himachal. The purpose why they had they have constructed or uh, uh, you know established this Gandhi Smarak Bhavan is to further the manifold constructive activities in which Gandhi was interested. and also to preserve and propagate his teachings so this gandhi smarak nidhi of punjab haryana himachal it is a trust which was constituted after the assassination of mahatma gandhi in 1948 so in february 1949 the trust was registered with 24 leaders of the country as founder trustees please remember it was established in 1949 these are multi statement questions please understand and uh, read the points okay so they include uh, dr rajendra prasad and uh, jawahar lal uh, nehru so please remember this at all leaders it is rajendra prasad jawahar lal nehru sardar vallabhai patel Chakravarti, Rajgopal Acharya, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Sri Jagjivan Ram, etc., were included in the Gandhi Smarak Bhavan or Gandhi Smarak Nidhi founder trustees. So it was founded in February 1949 after the assassination of Gandhi in 1948. In 1963, the Punjab State Gandhi Smarak Nidhi was registered as an independent trust named as Gandhi Smarak Nidhi Punjab. It was renamed to Gandhi Smarak Nidhi Punjab Haryana and Himachal Pradesh when the Punjab was divided into three states from the state of Punjab it became to Punjab Haryana and Himachal Pradesh The next is about this pineapple express So see here this is a river in the sky So it was a news because California and other parts of the west coast of the US has been hit with a series of true pineapple express so what is this pineapple express it is atmospheric rivers and it is part of earth's ocean water cycle so you can see a river in the sky actually so there are long narrow regions in the atmosphere it transports most of the water vapor outside the tropics the atmospheric rivers carry impressive amounts of water vapor that bring dangerous floods and heavy snow when the moisture begins to interact with the land So it is traveling from one region to another, and it is accumulating a lot of water vapor in it. And when it comes to interaction with the land, it pours in a lot of uh, uh, water, and it results in floods. Uh, also, it can lead to uh, heavy snow falling in the region. So atmospheric rivers come in different shapes and sizes. Pineapple Express is an example of a strong atmospheric. river which is happening in uh, california and other parts of the west coast of the united states 
So the moisture which builds up in the tropical uh, Pacific around the Hawaii uh, can wall off the US and Canada's west coast and cause it causes heavy rainfall and snow in the region. It is named the Pineapple Express due to the storm which has originated in Hawaii where pineapples are grown. The location of an atmospheric river is an important criteria to be a true pineapple express. So since there is a lot of pineapples grown in the region of Hawaii and uh, this atmospheric river is happening in this region, it is called a Pina pineapple express. So it is literally a river in the sky and carries a lot of weight, water vapor and when this water vapor uh, comes in interaction with the land, there is a lot of uh, uh, rainfall and also snow. The tail end where the moisture is pulled into the atmosphere must start near Hawaii to form this pineapple express. Then the river must stretch continuously through the atmosphere to the US west coast. Next important from your art and culture or GS1 topic is Charai Dio Maidams. So it was a news because the center has decided to nominate Assam's Charai Dio Maidams for the UNESCO World Heritage Center this year. So this Charai Dio is in Assam at the foothills of Nagaland. It is a Thai a home word. Charai Dio is a Thai a home word. It means a prominent city on the hilltop. You can see here it is a prominent city on the hilltop. The Maidams enshrine the mortal remains of the members of the Ahom royalty who are buried with their paraphernalia. Paraphernalia means some of the food items, cloth items, jewel items or etc. Which they believe that life after death. So therefore the Charaidio Maidams are considered as the Ahom equivalent of the ancient Egyptian pyramids and famously called as the pyramids of Assam. So this Char Charaidio Maidam is called as the pyramids of Assam because it uh, resembles like uh, the Egyptian pyramids and they believe in life after death. So this is the top view of this Charai Char Dio Maidams. So architecturally it comprises a massive underground vault with one or more chambers. It has domical superstructure which appears a hemispherical mound externally. The Maidams represent the late medieval that is 13th to 19th century mound burial tradition of the Thai Ahom community in Assam. And after the 18th century, the Ahom rulers adopted the Hindu method of cremation and began entombing the cremated bones and ashes in a Maidam in Charaidio. So they came from the uh, uh, they came from the Myanmar region. And uh, this Ahom dynasty was set up and in the 18th century they adopted the Hindu method and uh, uh, of cremation etc. And, and they uh, took the Hindu names from then onwards. So the Ahom dynasty was founded by Chao Lungsio Kapa. Sukapa it is, is famously known as Sukapa in 12, 1253. So this, uh, this man is uh, famously known as Sukapa. Sukapa in uh, the Assamese tradition and they have a, a great regards to the Sukapa in the Assamese folklore. Okay, so he started this or founded this uh, home dynasty in 1253 and this Charai Dio was the first capital of the Ahom dynasty. Uh, the Ahom rule lasted for about 600 years until the British annexed Assam in 1826. So from 1253 to 1856, almost 600 years, they ruled the entire Northeast, especially the Assam region of uh, India. Next important topic we are going to see is the Purana Kila. Uh, it was a news because the visiting delegates of the G20 summit in Delhi will be taken to this Purana Kila. So what is this Purana Kila? Where is it? It is on the banks of river Yamuna in Delhi. So if anyone asks you which river flows near Delhi, you can say Aram say that it is river Yamuna. So the Purana Kila is located on the banks of river Yamuna in Delhi. The fort has been an important site for trade and industrial activity in all periods. The 16th century fort complex was believed to be built by Sher Shah Suri and renovated by the Mughal emperor Humayun. So this Purana Kilo, Kila is a 16th century fort complex. It was built by Sher Shah Suri and it was renowned by the uh, renovated by the Mughal Emperor Humayun. 
the archaeological survey of india had conducted excavations in the site uh, between 1954 to 55 and 69 to 73 so here we saw the cultural deposits were discovered in various layers and confirms that the site has had a long and unbroken chain of habitation uh, for around 2500 years it revealed the existence of stratified layers belonging to eight periods which started from 4th century to 12th century sorry 19th century and at 8 meters below the ground level on the excavated trench are traces of pre-maurian era that is 6th to 4th uh, century bc and ground level denotes the mogul era the soil layers have cultural deposits of various other kingdoms of delhi that existed before the moguls So it is also known as Pandavunka Kila because from third uh, to fourth century onwards it has been habituated. So you, uh, there is a strong tradition which believes that this area in which the Purana Kila stands today is the site of Indraprastha. So Indraprastha was the capital of the Pandavas of the great epic Mahabharata, and the fort is also called the Pandavunka Kila. the excavation also revealed a few shards of painted grey ware which traced back to the mahabharata period so the next important topic is about the earth's inner core it says a new research suggested that the earth's inner core has stopped spinning faster than the planet's surface and might now be rotating slower than it so you can see here it is the fastest rotation and uh, from the surface inner core appears to be rotating forward that is eastward and this is called super rotation if it is revolving faster sync the rotation is in rotation with the earth so from the surface the inner core does not appear to rotate because it is in sync with the earth right the sub rotation is when it is slower or rotating slower than the planet's surface So now we have seen that uh, the inner core has stopped spinning faster and it is going slower than the planet's surface. The Earth's inner structure consists of four major layers. One is the outermost crust, that is uh, the outer one. This is the outer one. This is the outermost crust. The viscous but solid mantle below it. So this red color you you are seeing here is the solid mantle and the liquid iron nickel outer core. Uh, so this is the Uh, liquid iron nickel outer core and the solid iron a inner core is this one this is the inner core and it is very solid earth's inner core is hot iron ball in the size of pluto it is also known as planet within the planet so this uh, solid iron inner core which you can see here it is called the planet within a planet and is roughly 5000 kilometers that is 3100 miles below the crust so from here to from the crust to uh, the core it is around 5000 kilometers now why the rotation has slowed down so the inner core can spin independently because it floats in the liquid metal outer core so this outer metal core is liquid and this solid inner core uh, will be floating in the a liquid metal outer core the spin of the inner core is driven by the magnetic field generated in the outer core and balanced with the gravitational effects of the mantle so the gravity does not allow the earth to move in and around as it like so if you are rotating here it is controlled by the gravity too right the rotation of the inner core is studied through various seismic records and let's see about the oscillation cycle the inner core rotates related to the earth surface back and forth like a swing and one cycle of the swing is about 7 decades so the core is always rotating in the same direction that the entire planet uh, rotates that is east eastward sometimes it rotates faster than the outer layers other times it rotates slower and there are times when the rotations match up so a new research suggests that the inner core cycle is every 20 to 30 years rather than the 70 proposed in the latest study the changes rotation timeline is said to slightly impact the length of the day the next important topic is shumang leela it is manipur's traditional theater form uh, which has continued to inform and entertain down the ages uh, sorry to say before this uh, 
disturbance which happened in manipur uh, they, they the manipur is also known for different art forms and is one of the uh, richest uh, traditions uh, uh, land for tradition and art and culture so it is called shumang leela it translates to courtyard performance and is a traditional form of theater in manipur the in shumang leela the roles of women are all played by men called nupi shabis and in case of the women's theater groups the roles of men are played by women often the female roles are taken by taken up by the transgender actors the tradition is believed to be descended from lai aharoba the ritual of the meethi community of manipur the play serves as a medium to spread awareness among the people of social political and economic issues and let's see about this lai haroba It is a ritualistic festival observed by the Manipur Meethi communities since the ancient times. This Lai Aharo Arahoba, celebrated through oral literature, music, dance, and rituals, the cultural troops will be performing various cultural and traditional musical skits, including the Manipuri martial arts, folk music, and uh, uh, folk dances during the Lai Arahoba festival. So next is about the. Soliga tribal community. It was a news because new genus of uh, this wasp was named after the Soliga community in Karnataka in recognition to their conservation of forests and biodiversity. So this new genus of wasp was known as Soliga ekar ekarinata. Species of the same uh, specimens of the same species were collected from the secondary wet forest habitat of Nagaland. This species is named as Ekarinata, denoting the absence of ridges in certain body regions. So this new insect is strikingly colorful and distinct from all its relatives. So this new wasp belongs to the subfamily of Metopinae of Darwin's wasp family Ichneumidae. The family Meta Metopinae uh, has 862 species in 27 genera, including two fossil genera. Most of those are seen only in the Palearctic region, Neotropical, and Nearctic regions. So this pale pale Arctic region encompasses the Eurasia, including Europe, Northern Africa, the Asia, north of the Oriental. region the nearctic region consists of the trop subtropical tropical temperature and arctic north america the neotropical region is here defined as central america caribbean and south america so this is the second genus of the subfamily reported from india and the first from the south india so what is this amrit udayan why it was in news So it was in news because the Mughal Gardens, which is at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, were renamed as Amrit Udayan in keeping with the theme of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. So the Mughal Gardens in the Rashtrapati draw inspiration from the Mughal Gardens of Jammu and Kashmir, the gardens around the Taj Mahal, the miniature paintings of India and Persia. So Edwin Lutyens had finalized the designs of the Mughal Gardens in 1970, but it was only during the year 1928 and 29 the plantings were actually done. So there are three gardens in the Rashtrapati Bhavan which are inspired by the Mughal and the Persian gardens. So the one inspired from the garden in Sri Nagar is known as the Mughal Garden. So however, the gardens were never officially named as Mughal Gardens, but the they came to be known so owing to the style of architecture the style was uh, influenced by the persian gardens particularly the char bagh structure which is intended to create a representation of harmony with the elements of nature so i'll tell you this is uh, this is the monument manle ki ye manu monument hai and the char bagh goes like this char bagh goes like this so 1 2 Three, four are the divisions, and this is the char bag, right? Typical features include pools, fountains, and canals inside the garden. See, the four directions are uh, symbolic in nature for, uh, uh, of the Quran, and also uh, water plays a very significant role in the life of a Muslim, according to Quran. So, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan have a number of Mughal gardens. Babur had described his favorite type of garden as char bhag. 
So the next important topic is Baiga Tribal Heart. It was a news because Jodhaya Bai Bega has been awarded the Padma Shri for promoting the tribal Baiga art at the global level. So the work of the artist which depicts the Baiga tribal culture on the canvas has been exhibited internationally in multiple countries. The Baigas are an ethnic group which is uh, found in the central India, primarily in the state of Madhya Pradesh and in smaller number in Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. So the Baigas are considered as a particularly vulnerable tribal group that is PVTG in the Indian constitution. So they rely mostly on the shifting cultivation or bever, uh, forested produce and fishing for their sustenance. So Baiga tribe is the first community to get habitat rights in India. So a distinguished feature of the Baiga tribal women is sporting tattoos of various kinds on almost all parts of their body. The art of tattooing is called Godna. Lowe's low basalt plateau. So it was in news because the Agarkar Research Institute in Pune have found a rare low altitude basalt plateau in the Western Ghats. A rare low altitude basalt plateau was discovered as Manjre village in Thane district in the Western Ghats. And the Western Ghats are one of the four global biodiversity hotspots in India. These plateaus are dominant landscapes in the Western Ghats and significant because of the predominance of endemic species. Endemic species are those which belong to the local environment and they are classified as a rock type of rock outcrop. The three types of rock outcrops are known in Western Ghats that is lateritic outcrops at high lateritic low altitude, basalt outcrops at high altitude. So recently discovered low altitude basalt plateau is the fourth type. So the rock, rock outcrops are the landscape habitats with more areas of rock surface exposure than the surrounding areas. It emerges when the surface soil and other materials wear off, exposing the parent rock surface. The outcrop is identified in, uh, if the area has more than 50% of such rocks. 76 plant species belonging to 24 different families are found in the low altitude plateau. Some of the plant species are unique to it while others are common among the four plateaus. So these outcrops have seasonal water availability, limited soil and nutrients which provide a unique and challenging environment for the species to adapt to. It provides a unique model to study the effects of climate change on species survival and how species interact in varying environmental conditions. So now a different community called Irula community was in news because Mr. Vadivel Gopal and Mr. Masi Sadayan of the Irula community uh, got this year's Padma Shri uh, with, uh, for having been part of the Irula Snake Catchers Industrial Cooperative Society. The Irula community is a particularly vulnerable tribal group and uh, it is a part of PVTG. The Irula, also called the people of darkness, inhabit mostly in the northern Tamil Nadu districts and some parts of Kerala and Karnataka. Researchers have shown that the tribe have their origin from the ethnic groups of Australia. They speak this Irula language, which is closely related to the Dravidian languages like Tamil and Kannada. So the Irulas have been traditionally catching snake and rat, but also work as laborers. The expertises of Irulas about snakes and snake venom is legendary. The tribes people know the places where snakes hide from experience and instinct. They can even find snakes by their track, smell and droppings. The Irula Snake Catchers Industrial Cooperative Society is one of the major anti-snake venom producers in the country. So the next important thing you have to know from the examination point of view is this Toto language. It was a news because Daniram, who is a Toto or Denka language preserver, is a recipient of Padma Shri Award in the field of literature and education. Toto is a primitive and isolated tribal group of population of only 1,632 people and they reside only in a small enclave called Toto Para in Ali Purudar district of West Bengal. The Toto Para is located at the foot of the Himalayas, just to the south of the borderline between Bhutan and West Bengal on the western bank of Torza River. They speak an eponymous language called Toto. 
and it belongs to tibeto burman family of sub himalayan group and classified by oxen and grayson so this toto language does not have their own script and dhani ram has created the toto language script and toto alphabet for which he has received padma shri at present poems and novels are being written in toto the next important topic is vishwa bharati university uh, it was a news because it will soon get the heritage tag from the unesco to take the distinction of world's first living heritage university uh, talking about the vishwa bharati university it was founded by rabindranath tagore in 1921 and is located in shanti niketan of west bengal Rabindranath believed in open air education and introduced the open air education system at the university and it prevails to date he donated some of his property including the land and bungalow to the society and when founded in 1921 it was named after rabindranath tagore until vishwa bharati society was registered as an organization in may 1922 So till independence, it was a college. That is, nineteen twenty one to nineteen forty seven. In nineteen fifty one, the institution was given the status of central university and an institution of national importance by the Act of Parliament. So it is a statutory institution. The first vice chancellor was Rathindranath Tagore, who is who was the son of Rabindranath Tagore. The second vice chancellor was grandfather of Nobel laureate economist Amartya Sen. The Prime Minister of India acts as the Chancellor, and President appoints the Vice Chancellor of the University. Next is about micro quake. Uh, uh, these micro quakes are preventing any large scale earthquakes in India, and these micro quakes are very low intensity earthquakes with a magnitude of two point zero or less. It is located in a seismically active region where fifty nine percent of India's land mass is prone to earthquakes. but frequent occurrences of micro earthquakes in india releases the stored up energy in a consistent times time interval prevents any large scale disaster so uh, you should know about this triple junction uh, it is a point where three tectonic plates meet and interact so the triple junction is a point where three tectonic plates meet and interact and uh, these are important areas of geological activity which are rigid compact and withstand a lot of stress so if it breaks the entire stress is released causing causing a lot of damage the breaking of this tri junction led to the recent massive earthquake in turkey and syria In India the triple junction on India's western border with Pakistan was prevented by the micro level earthquakes and often releases energy. You should also know uh, this couple zone. Couple zone is a region where two tectonic plates horizontally slide past each other. India is divided into four seismic zones based on the potential for earthquake activity in each region and you should also know about the seismic zone. It is an area where there is high probability of earthquakes due to the areas geology so if you see here i have given you the division you you can see zone 5 as most active and covers 11% of india's land mass see here it is in red color zone 5 which is most active uh, almost entire part of northeast india the himalayan foot hills of the sikkim and uh, bhutan region and here uh, you can see himachal pradesh and uh, you know uh, punjab haryana region and jammu kashmir region and also this gujarat part kutch range where you had this kutch earthquake zone 4 it is given in uh, this orange color jammu kashmir and uh, north uh, north india no uh, this east india is coming under the zone 4 and it covers 18% of the indian land mass zone 3 is given in yellow color yellow color the north india central parts of india most like uh, the western part it uh, the zone 3 is covering uh, 30% of india's land mass and is ranging from western parts of india central india north india and also southern india zone 2 is the least active and covers the majority of the india's land mass that is 41% The next topic we cover is Dhan and the Saraswati. He was in news because Prime Minister Narendra Modi has recently paid tribute to Dhan and the Saraswati, who is a social reformer on his 200th birthday anniversary. 
So Swami Dayananda Saraswati was born on 12th of February 1824 in Tankara of Gujarat. He was earlier named the Mool Shankar Tiwari. He was a Indian philosopher, social leader and founder of the Arya Samaj. He believed in the infallible authority of Vedas. This is a very very important uh, a statement he believed in the infallible authority of the vedas uh, dayananda ad- advocated the doctrine of karma and reincarnation emphasized the vedic ideals of brahmacharya including celibacy and devotion to god so denouncing the idolatry and ritualistic worship he worked towards reviving the vedic ideologies he was first to give the call for india for indians that is swaraj in 1876 a call later taken up by lokmanya tilak sarvapalli radha krishnan india's second president and an influential educationist called dayananda saraswati a maker of modern india so this is very very important please this is a very important point okay this uh, this three uh, are very very important uh, this is also important that he gave a, a call like uh, he believed in the infallible authority of the vedas and he advocated the doctrine of karma and reincarnation emphasized on the vedic ideals of brahmacharya celibacy and devotion to god please remember all these points because you may be asked uh, uh, this question in the multiple statement question so he established this vedic schools for the education of girls and boys of all caste the dayananda anglo vedic schools came into existence in 1886 to realize the vision of swami dayananda saraswati the next important topic is mehroli this mehroli was in news because the delhi development authority simply called dda is undertaking a drive to clear unauthorized uh, encroachments in the mehroli archaeological park so this mehroli city is considered to be the oldest city of delhi and it is the oldest area of the metropolis of delhi to be continuously inhabited so who founded this mehroli it was founded as a lal court in the 11th century by anang pal 2 who was the ruler of the rajput tomar dynasty so he is anang pal 2 and it was initially called the lal court so later it was christened as khilarai pithoda by the mughal court historian abul fasal in his uh, hagiography that is an a akbari so this city then passed from the tomars to chauhans who are credited to have further fortified the complex then it, the city fell into the hands of mamluk dynasty simply called slave dynasty in 1192 and it led to the uh, delhi sultanate right later kutub uh, kutubuddin aibak the first ruler of the slave dynasty began the construction of kutub minar which is also known as kuwahat al islam mosque the oldest known mosque in north india the india's oldest mosque is chera manjuma built by the arab merchants in kerala so mehroli is also a spiritual center a home to both hindu and muslim shrines the annual community celebration of pool walon ki sair or sher e gulfa roshan that is walk of the flowers is a witness to metro mehroli's cosmopolitanism So the 19th century Mughal era festival that is Pool Walon Ki Sair or Sair e Gulf Roshan it has become the symbol of city's communal harmony since 1962 So thank you we'll see in the next part